Hello guys, how are you? Um, I'm right here at Twingate Soccer uh, Locker Room with Coach Axel. Um, he was also a former uh, soccer player for Wingate and now he's the assistant coach. We're going to ask a couple questions that all are possible will help you to decide to come to the United States. Okay. Boss, thank you very much no, to no, help no. us here. Um, so the first question for me uh, and for our ASM team is trying to understand what is the difference first to be a coach at Wingate when you were a player right here in the same sport? Uh, it's, it's been very different. Obviously, surroundings and everything are exactly the same. I'm around a lot of the same people that I knew when I played here, but just being on the other, other side of the ball, I guess, it's, there's a lot more that goes into it than you see as a student athlete. So, you know, the boys come in here, come in the locker room, be here about three, four hours a day, whereas as a coach, I get in eight o'clock in the morning and we're here till after practice at six, seven, sometimes eight o'clock at night. So there's a lot more behind the scenes now as a coach, yeah. but it's still fun, it's still football. I'm still watching football all day, analyzing games, you know, helping the boys out with things they want to do. So it's, it's great. And that leads me to the next question. It's like, how do you miss your soccer player time? <laughs> Don't forget about the coaching, but how do you miss your student in the, your soccer player time? You miss, be, you miss going out and playing 11v11, 11 11. you know, you miss lining up against 11 other players, yeah. giving, giving a little bit of trash talk on the field and being able to walk off the field and say, yeah, we just, we just got three points, I'm absolutely knackered, but it was 100% worth it. Again, as a coach, you still walk off the field, you get three points and you're happy, but you're, you're not as exhausted. It's, it's still a great feeling, it's just not, it's not the same feeling as actually playing the 90 minutes. But in general, you had a great experience as a student athlete, international oh, student athlete. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I mean, I don't, I don't know about many other schools, but we have quite a few international athletes, both on the soccer team and all the other programs. And it's because of the campus is, is not massive, it's yeah. big but small. It kind of has like that small community feel, whereas you, you walk across campus, you know, you walk from your dorm to the soccer field and you see however many people you know, whether they're international, whether they're American or not. And, Exactly. Half the time you spend five, ten minutes talking to each and every one of them, so it's quite cool. That's a good point that sometimes people don't understand the difference between D1 or D2. Uh, and you just mentioned the communication and people give you attention. What's your like advice when you need to decide uh, regarding a D2 school? What's, what do you feel about that that way? Uh, well, obviously it depends on the football. If There's a lot of D2 programs that are just as good, if not better, than D1 programs. Uh, I think the main part of being D1 and D2 is the size of the school. Okay. For example, here at Wingate we have around 3,000 students, which is why we, can't, we won't go into D1 or can't go into D1, but D1 schools, you'll, you'll go to schools with hundreds of thousands of students. So that, that's the big difference, and then obviously with them hundreds of thousands of students, they have more people turn up at the games and everything, so in that aspect it's more of a family. Yeah, it's more of like a city, big city feel at a big school, whereas this one's more of a family community everybody knows everyone and you know everyone everyone gets along so kind of you go to the basketball games you support the basketball team you bring all the other sports to the soccer team correct so it's yeah. like an environment <laughs> yeah i mean most, most games you'll see you know you'll see a lot of well, not a lot of fans but you'll see fans in the stage i mean it's it's people you see around the classroom it's people you sit next to in the class it's people you know you eat lunch with it's people you actually have class with it's people you you see and speak around the school so it's it's almost like they're, they're with you there, they're part of the team almost because you know, you're with them all day, every day. That's great. So, so tell, me, tell me a bit more about also the, specifically about the soccer, um, soccer team. I play with you, I play with other players uh, from this team. Always great talent. Uh, tell me about like, the experience you had in the summer leagues, for example. How Wingate help you uh, as a player, to, like your development. How they help you to build other connections, for example. There's Probably the best decision I ever made to come here, you know, it's, you, you guys are just seeing the facilities yourselves are absolutely top notch, you know, I've been at professional setups and everything and they don't have some of the facilities we have here, but everything down from the facilities all the way down to even just how you treat like people around, you treat like a real professional, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's all day, every day, you've got physio, you've got, you know, we'll give you nutrition advice, help on, help on diets, help on, you know, if you want to gain weight in the weight room, if, if you know, if you want to, be a little bit faster, we'll help yeah. you with that. There's, there's absolutely nothing that we can't help you with here. All you have to do is ask. And it's having that resources is something that I never had, you know, growing up. So having it here just it made made myself and most of the other players, you know, flourish and just grow as players and people. 
Mm-hmm. How do you compare these facilities we have here to home? It's like a big difference or not? <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> man. It's night and day really like I remember some places back home you get changed and, and you know the whole team all you get is a bench in a in a in a great right, and, yeah, right. yeah, and it's raining outside so then you come here and you get your own locker, you know, locks and everything, so it's it's absolutely fantastic. And then you know the pitch of the stadium and everything, it's it's grass fields, it's an absolute carpet, so it's you can't really complain. Oh, that's cool. So from your experience now as a coach, before as a player, how do you get like how always should be the perfect recruit? I, this is a tricky question. It's a very tricky question. I know, question. I know, but you cannot, all, you cannot forget about the classroom, okay? No. That's no. important too, but how can we tell our players uh, to be a perfect recruit? In all honesty, I don't think they'll ever be a perfect recruit, yeah. but uh, to be the best recruit you can be is obviously grades are going to help so much. You know, the school, every school in America is going to help you out financially, and the better grades you have, the more financial help the school will give you. And then that, that's also going to put less pressure on your coaches as a, as a coach and staff. You know, I don't know how it works at other schools, but the school requires our student athletes to up, keep a 2.2 GPA. Okay. So, you know, that's, that's a minimum of C's in every class and, and you won't make it to, and you'll make it 2.0. So you have to be, you have to be behind, you have to be up with your work. Don't get, don't fall behind on your work. Uh, and obviously the soccer, hopefully the soccer speaks yeah. for itself, but Again, uh, lots of videos are good. Highl- highlights are great. Uh, the coaching staff, you know, that's how that's how you get our attention. The highlight video, but then after that, we, we need to see full games and and speak with you about football. You know, if I have a conversation with someone who has a really good highlight tape and realizes tactically he's he's not switched on at all, that's a massive massive no for us. You know, okay. we want players coming in who who know the game and can adapt to different situations, different surroundings, different settings, even different formations. So That's a good point. So it's not just like how you manage to do a good highlight video. You're no, trying no, to no, go no. deeper. No. That's a good point because sometimes people don't understand with soccer coaches. They probably receive thousands of videos every day. Okay, not every day, but every week. How do you manage to understand when a player, he catch your eye with your highlight video, that's very important, of mm-hmm. course, but how do you manage to understand if he's the, the perfect player for you, tactical and technical. So technical is obviously you're going to see the technical in his highlight videos, mm-hmm. which is so we kind of describe it as like an iceberg. The highlight video is just the tip. That, that's all we see to begin with. That's all. That's all we need for your attention. If we get your attention from the highlight video. That's when everything yeah, else comes into it. So like you said, the the tactical aspect. That's whether it's a phone call, a video call. You know, talk talking to a player about where he's playing now, where he wants to go, and then obviously comparing that to where we are now and where we want to go. See if our our ideas of football match up, see if our goals match up, and see his overall thoughts about the game and, and okay. how he thinks about football. That's, a, that's massive as well, just to know that we're not getting someone in who can who can just header a ball, kick a ball, or shoot. You know, We want someone in who actually loves football and is going to make the place, make the dressing room a, a better place to be. Okay, so from the, the top of the iceberg, the iceberg, so it's very important also having a very good highlight video because you're yeah. in the US, you're mm-hmm. recruiting players from all over the world, Yeah, you're not going to have time um, to go all over like Denmark, Portugal, mm-hmm. Brazil, China, so the highlight video is very important. Very important, yeah, that's, so, that's what we get and then after the highlight video we'll typically ask for at least yeah. a half, you okay. know, if we're interested in it, we ask for a half or a 90 minute clip, that's where we're going to find out Okay, he may need a little bit of help in his tactical area. You know, he's sometimes let's say he's a right back, for example. Mm-hmm. He's sometimes disconnected from the back four. Let's see if this is something we can touch on him, see his thoughts about it, and if, if he can talk through it and understand why we think he's getting disconnected, and if he can talk us through that, then that's obviously okay. At least he knows the game and he can see his mistakes. Hopefully, he can build on that, and let's see if he can give us a little bit more footage where he can correct that. That's uh, true. Uh, I mentioned that you. You recruit all over the world. Well, how many nationalities do you have in your team? Do you have Ooh. an idea? <laughs> that's, a good, okay. that's a good question. I yeah. can cut it there. <laughs> <laughs> well. um, I think we're on you around. You should. Uh, you kind of read the moment. I think we're on around ten or ten, around ten nationalities. Yeah. If if we're going off, you know, we have some players who who are Amer- uh, born in America but are of South American persuasion. Okay. So do they all class as Americans or are they South American? From there. From their home country where their parents were born. Okay. So 
We have a few players like that. We have a few players born down in South America, a few players from Scandinavia, England, mainland Europe. So. And as a coach, how do you manage to control and to interact with every every players from different places? Do you think it's a great experience for them? Is something very good for their growth? Oh, 110 percent. It's you know, especially if they speak a different language, you know, uh, I don't, you don't, you, your English isn't your first language. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> So, you know, you know yourself how hard it is coming to a new country, not knowing the language. So just being able to be around the boys and being patient and, being, and you know, helping them out as much as possible. We understand, you know, if you come to us as an 18 year old, most of the times you're still a kid. You might not think you're a kid, but nine times out of 10, you're still a kid. You know, you've been with your parents for 18 years of your life. Now this is where you, you learn to grow as a person and, and be your own person rather than someone at home who's telling you to be who to be. So you still keep in contact with all the, the places from, I the players from other places? Oh yeah, world? me as a player, pretty much every player I've played with, I, I still speak to regularly, you know, FaceTime a few of them every now and then, when I go home to visit, I'll see all the rest of the boys from England every time I go home, so. There's experience for life. Oh yeah, you make friends for life, yeah. That's good. And plus if you get some, if you get some players from nice countries, you've always got nice <laughs> <destinations>. <laughs> There we go. There Mine is I'm going to go to Portugal soon. <laughs> it's always promising, it never happens. <laughs> <laughs>